He's on the Maori history. Straight through the Right, we're going in the way of the new way now. Whatever that is, but we've got to take our shoes off. So, let's have a go. These large, spacious, Maori-made huts called mare are used for religious ceremonies and for local villagers to discuss issues of their environment that affect their tribe. In our Western cultures, they would have been considered community centers. The carvings inside the huts were all handmade and represented past ancestors. Tell me all about the carving. The Maori are particularly famous for their elaborate carvings, which can be seen on meeting houses, boats and jewellery. Inspiration for the designs were taken from the landscape. Ancestral spirits are believed to endure and give strength to the living when called upon. Carved walking sticks and jewellery are especially treasured as they are said to carry the spirit of their previous owners. The Maori traditionally have a very close relationship to their environment. Their mythology is based in the belief in gods of the forest and the sea, which are worshipped and expressed through song, dance and prayer. One hundred warriors can fit inside this 25 metre Maori war canoe, carved by hand from a single totara tree. There is also part of the museum that show and teach us the history of the Maori people, dating as far back as 1790. Te Mare, meaning Maori meeting place, was one of the most important and exciting places within the museum. The inside walls are decorated with colourful carvings symbolising historic events that happened in New Zealand. This is um, where they do all the ritual dances. It's people's genealogy. It's called the Waka Papa. And this was to show the inside ways. Take a look. All around the hall, the decorations and paintings tell different stories. You do what? Something is my whacker, how I got here. The aeroplane. Here, Barry figures out his genealogy. You can take one of these yes. sheets and you oh. can fill it in, and then you can choose one of these um, patterns and, may, and rub it off like this, and it will show on it. Okay. Find one of the round ones for here. Okay. And that would be just kind of something representing yourself. Okay. Okay. And then you can put it in here, kind of to connect yourself to all the other people. Oh, isn't that interesting? I think that's yeah. Good. yeah. Okay. You can the United States. Oh, 
your best for me. It's holding the camera. And that's my symbol of the sun. It's like a bit of sun. Well, just to feel that uh, I wasn't left out. I recorded Barry, but I filled in my own. And here's mine. Uh, and the cameraman, because I'm stating the obvious. Uh, I've got Sun, because I thought, well, Leo is the closest thing to it, isn't it? Fire sign. Uh, there you go. I'm in the gang now. So this will uh, be sent home and cherished for it. Or probably lost in transit. So that was Tupacla Museum, Wellington, New Zealand. There's too much you think about a first club band. I can't play ball because it's way too rough. I sure won't box because it box too tough. So baby, let's play it. Well, in the background is Kent Terrace Road. This is where the uh, World Premiers were held in Lord of the Rings. Over my shoulder there's a stamp with um, Orlando Bloom as Legolas from Lord of the Rings. And across the street he shot an arrow into a goat. Lord of the Rings is everywhere. And as you can see behind me, he's one of the characters from the film. St. George's Cathedral under renovation by most cathedral. One thing you couldn't knock New Zealand for was its fresh approach to architecture and new design. This city certainly looked fresh, even though some of its streets were a little grubby. In the heart of Wellington, we headed to the famous Te Aro Park, which was designed by ceramics artist Shona Rapira Davis. The park, even though it is quite small, is famous for its overall design. When viewed from a high vantage point, it represents the shape of a canoe. But unfortunately, this didn't differ from the fact it was still dirty. We're in Sierra Park, well, it's, and it, it's crowded there. Is it? It's horrible. It's where all the one-legged seagulls hang out as well. And it's just horrible. It's really grubby. Let's get back to it. As we leave Barry sitting in his squalor contemplating a pint or two in the fat lady's arms. We thought we'd finish off the day by the harbour with a nice snatch, a nice bronze snatch. That's our first full day in Wellington done. The weather's dried up a bit. We've seen a little bit of outside but uh, God knows what tomorrow brings. Anyway, we thought we'd leave you with a nice snatch. A nice Snatch. Nice big snatch. So uh, enjoy the view.